Dr. Ben Bickman and Dr. Ken Berry on hyperinsulemia's effect on fat loss, type 2 diabetes, cancer, and PCOS. This is from Dr. Ken Berry's YouTube podcast, April 2020. For reference, see Ken D. Berry, MD, and Insulin IQ. Fat burning, that's what I'm all about, right, is to help you burn fat. If you want to lose weight globally, if you want to lose bone density, if you want to lose muscle mass, then calorie restrict because you'll, you'll, you'll lose fat, but you'll also lose yeah. bone density and muscle and you'll lose cartilage and tendon and sinew. Yep, starvation. Fat. Starvation is a wonderful way to waste away. Yes, but you're not going to just burn fat or lose fat. If you'd like to just lose fat and keep your muscle and keep your bone density, then you have to think about the hormone model of fat burning. And that's what Dr. Bickman's all about. I am unaware of any situation where a person can lose weight unless insulin is low. We have known that if you give a type 1 diabetic who is initially insulin deficient, you give them insulin, their metabolic rate will slow by about 300 calories per day. We are just finishing um, the, the work to publish our paper finding that ketones, which, which I, I don't mean to introduce yet if we don't want to. Ketones are produced by the liver. They turn fat into energy. They allow your body to become a fat-burning machine instead of burning sugar and glucose. In contrast, are stimulating metabolic rate. And both of this, insulin and ketones, are having an effect directly at the fat cell, <clears throat> stimulating the fat cell to be more or less active. I define insulin resistance as, as two things. One, insulin isn't working the same way as normal in the various cells of the body, and that is a particular part of, of the disease state. In some cells, insulin is working the same as ever. In some cells, it is not. In light of the fact that the second aspect of insulin resistance is, as you state very accurately, the hyperinsulinemia, you cannot pull those two apart. Insulin resistance is hyperinsulinemia, and that is so profound in its simplicity because it changes how we detect diseases or diagnose them, and it changes how we treat them. We look at type 2 diabetes as a glucose disease, but in so doing, we detect it far later and we treat it far worse. If we look at type 2 diabetes as an insulin problem, well then, over the years, the insulin's been climbing, 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 the hyperinsulinemia of insulin resistance, but it's enough to keep the glucose in check. But this right here is so important because so commonly we say that uh, type 2 diabetes, your beta cells aren't making enough insulin. And so in that situation <clears throat> of the steadily climbing glucose and insulin, the average clinician will say, well, we don't care about your insulin. So we're just going to bump it up even higher, uh, give you insulin injections because we know it'll push down your glucose. Yeah, it'll push down the glucose, but it'll make the person fatter and sicker than they were before. But the yep. problem is, is that your insulin level, in order to keep your glucose normal, is sky high because you're yep. eating too many carbohydrates. And so you literally, if your doctor knew to check a C-peptide and to check a fasting insulin, they could actually diagnose your prediabetes or your hyperinsulinemia up to a decade up to 10 years, your doctor could literally be clairvoyant and look into the future and say, you, my friend, are about to develop type 2 diabetes. I can tell because your C-peptide is so high, even though your blood sugar is still normal, we've got to change your diet before you become a, a pre-diabetic or a type 2 diabetic. Traditional concerns about aging. One, protein spikes mTOR. Two, mTOR causes advanced aging. So it was recommended to keep protein low. Insulin stimulates mTOR far more than amino acids do from the dietary protein. So aging mm -hmm. is related to, to insulin potentially. Cancers, we know that breast and prostate cancers are incredibly responsive to insulin. Indeed, if you pull a biopsy of normal breast tissue and compare it to a biopsy from a breast tumor, the breast tumor has seven times more insulin receptors in it than, than the normal breast tissue. That means it is seven times more responsive to that insulin. And what does insulin do? It tells cells to grow. And that's good, we need it. It's a natural part of human, any animal physiology, but you don't want a cancer cell to be told to grow. And of course, it, it's stimulating that growth. 
and, and then we could, we could I, I could, I'll just mention another one just because it might be unexpected. Even um, fertility, polycystic ovarian syndrome, something I know you're familiar with um, in, in your practice because it's so common, indeed, the most common form of infertility in women. It at its core is a disease of too much insulin, where the insulin is inhibiting the conversion of sex hormones in the ovaries. So this woman's ovaries end up overproducing androgens that should have been converted in like testosterone that should have been converted into estrogens. That's just a basic truth of physiology that all estrogens were once androgens. So they come from testosterone. That's how it's supposed to be. But that conversion isn't happening. So her ovaries are pumping out a lot of testosterone when they should be pumping out a lot of the estrogens. Summary. One, to lose body fat, keep insulin low. Low carb eating will do this. Two, ketones stimulate metabolism to lose fat. Low carb eating will do this. Three, insulin resistance is hyperinsulinemia. Your doctor should check C-peptide and insulin. Four, insulin stimulates growth in prostate and in breast cancer. Five, insulin inhibits the sex hormone conversion of the ovaries, leading to PCOS. <laughs>